Belief in evolution is nothing more than a gut feeling. The National Center for Science Eradication supports teaching more bad science in the classroom. And of course, we read viewer feedback. This is still one of the most talked about shows on YouTube. This is Genesis Week. And a welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the Origins controversy, exclusive right here on YouTube. Once again, in the top 10 most talked about videos in science and technology on YouTube, we bring you the information the anti-creationists don't want you to see or hear, and we show the glory of God in creation. Hey, don't get lost in cyberspace. Just punch in wazulu.com or genesisweek.com, you will find us, or click the ever so convenient subscribe link up top. I'm your host, Ian Juvie. A live science article carried the bold and revealing headline, Belief in Evolution Boils Down to a Gut Feeling. Now, I must first make a disclaimer. The vast majority of people that I've met who are of evolutionary persuasion are good, honest people who simply have never heard any of the overwhelming evidence refuting evolution and affirming creation. After all, evolution has an army of judges, lawyers, and school policies to hide behind and thus protect the masses from those inconvenient facts. Thus the reason for this program, to educate people on what they haven't been told. Now, dealing with this subject regularly, I, of course, run into many people who religiously cling to evolution in spite of the facts, not because of them. And so the Live Science article is an especially interesting read. The Live Science team was reporting on an article by Minsu Ha et al. in the Journal of Research in Science Teaching, available online for free. After waxing eloquently on how central important evolution is to biology, the authors lament the fact that yet many, including biology teachers, do not accept evolutionary theory as an adequate explanation for the diversity and unity of life on Earth. And what has to be the ultimate irony, the authors never stop to ask questions like, do these people who understand biology perhaps have a good scientific reason to reject evolution? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Instead, they go on to propose that people who accept or reject evolution do it based on gut feeling. The researchers never stop to consider their own psychological projection that they themselves are believing evolution strictly because their gut tells them so, and not because of any scientific fact. I have some news for you folks. There are numerous lines of scientific evidence which refute evolution, and in fact, the evolution, the evidence from biology is some of the most powerful evidence refuting evolution, hence the reason many biologists reject evolution as the only explanation for life and its diversity. You know, people like geneticists Dr. Kevin Anderson, Dr. Gene Leitner, Dr. Jonathan Sanford, co-inventor of the gene gun, or Dr. Jerry Bergman, who holds nine degrees, two of them PhDs. The good scientific reasons from biology that refute evolution and instead point to a creator are really too many to list. But some examples are the origin of life, codependency of systems in life, genetic entropy, irreducible complexity, the lack of biological mechanisms to produce new and useful genetic information, etc., etc. Never considering even once that evolutionary theory could possibly have problems, or heaven forbid be wrong, the authors make an interesting comment. Educational research into acceptance of evolutionary theory will likely benefit from increased attention to non-conscious intuitive cognitions that give rise to feeling of knowing or certainty. Translation, meh, we don't have to have the facts to convince them, we just need to focus on putting on a convincing show. Mm. The National Center for Science Eradication has decided to take on global warming, now called climate change, because global warming was so thoroughly refuted it's gotten a bad name. Comparing global warming to creationism, the NCSE has decided to take on this battle in the schools. Basically, teachers in schools are feeling pressured to teach the controversy, in other words, <laughs> teach the facts, <laughs> of the alleged global warming, specifically the connection between human activity and global warming. 
This is not difficult to discredit. We had an Ice Age. We are no longer in an Ice Age. And the recession of the Ice Age had nothing to do with human activity. One good volcano emits more greenhouse gases than all the entire industrial world does in a year. The correlation between sunspot activity and global temperatures is staggering. And let us not forget the huge methane beds buried in the continental shelves around the world, which contain way more methane than all of the cow flatulations that McDonald's can produce. So it's to be expected that the NCSE would stand up for bankrupt science and help defend teachers against those who would like to see our children educated with actual facts instead of propaganda. It's interesting to note that the NCSE is a private organization funded by private individuals with unknown motives and intentions. The NCSC has publicly supported open flagrant bigotry in academia towards anyone who dares question evolution and has spearheaded most of the legal wranglings in a desperate attempt to protect evolution from scientific scrutiny in our education system. This group has always targeted schools and specifically aimed their guns at propagandizing your children. Now, although they have science and education in their name, this is akin to the so-named Planned Parenthood, an organization which has nothing to do with planning or parenthood. It is clear that NCSE's actions are anti-science and anti-education. Real scientists don't seek court protection and mandate for their theories to be taught in our schools. And real science welcomes scrutiny. I welcome scrutiny in everything I say, because I'm not afraid of the truth and the facts. Why does the NCSC so venomously fight scrutiny? Hmm? Well, it's finally here, and the wait has been worth it. For those of you who caught my good friend Spike Becerra's Volume 1 of What You Aren't Being Told About Astronomy, he has just released Volume 2. It was more of the fantastic drinking from the fire hose information, revealing God's astounding handiwork, showing why there has to be a creator, and that the creator of the Bible is the most likely culprit. Many of those in the anti-creation community went into major damage control mode when Spike's first video came out, criticizing Spike personally on blogs and on YouTube, while never addressing the scientific points he made. Or worse trying to respond to his points and making a bigger mess for the evolution of the solar system. In his latest video, he takes on the origin of stars and galaxies. One of the many points he makes is showing how every secular theory on the origin of stars and galaxies requires pre-existing stars. This video is only a few more nails in the coffin of the evolution of the astronomical bodies, and you can get your own copy from creationastronomy.com for a measly 15 bucks. I highly recommend the video, and I'm so looking forward to Volume 3. Homeschoolers! Carrie Jane Clark has a homeschool blog and is now holding a Think About a Thursday starting today, <laughs> where she has a segment devoted to creation and homeschooling. I'll be the guest writer on the blog and will attempt to address common questions homeschoolers may have. Here's the link to her website right here. Mail for me? I was again impressed with the comments of Circus of Precision on YouTube, who posted dozens of very enlightening comments, which were met by a barrage of willfully blind individuals. Now, there's too many comments to repeat here. I'll simply encourage viewers to take a look, and I commend Circus of Precision, who apparently is not a young Earth creationist. I can only commend you for your diligence in educating those who do not want to be educated and will simply remind you that you are being read by many others who are not commenting but are paying close attention to how you have thoroughly and fearlessly decimated those who propone falsehoods. Precision, for your valiant efforts in the intellectual battle, particularly against those who seem to have come to an intellectual battle unarmed, I salute you. I'd buy you Tim Horton's coffee because I'm sure your head must hurt after the barrage of non-sequiturs and bad science that's been hurled at you. Wazulu, and now that you've proved an intelligent designer created life, which god is it? How have you confirmed that the gods of other religions and books are false and yours are true? An intelligent designer is a very vague concept. Scientists created life in the lab, are they also intelligent designers? 
If so, then that proves you don't need a guide to design life. That was just an excellent question, John B. Groovy. Thank you for writing in. You are quite correct. An intelligent designer is a vague concept. We need to ask the question. If there is an intelligent designer, then who is that designer? And how would you know? Jesus claimed to be the creator, but hey, I've had people tell me they were God. Just because someone claims they're God doesn't mean they're God. So when someone comes up to you and claims they're God, what's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? I don't know about you, but the first thing I said was, oh yeah, prove it. <laughs> well, let's prove Christ is God. He proved it with so many miracles that even his enemies didn't deny them, including the miracle of rising from the dead. Stalin didn't do this, nor did Buddha, nor did the flying spaghetti monster. Islamics even specifically state that Muhammad did not do any miracles, and I actually agree with them when they say that they d it does not mean that he was not a genuine prophet. After all, the Bible referred to John the Baptist as the greatest prophet ever, yet he did no miracle. Rather, the question here is, will the real and true creator God please stand up? Jesus did countless miracles, but hey, Chris Angel does miracles all the time. Perhaps Jesus was just a really good magician. Well, as a further sign that he was who he said he was, we have books written thousands of years before his arrival that made over 400 specific prophecies about Christ that were all fulfilled in Christ. God told the people of Earth he was going to come to Earth as a human to redeem us. Basically, he said, you will know it's me because I will do this, 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 you get the point. He fulfilled those prophecies, including where he would be born, where he would die, how he would die, that none of his bones would be broken, that he would be betrayed by a friend, how many pieces of silver he would be betrayed for. Finally, that he would rise again from the dead. No one else has ever done this. That is how you know who the creator is. And this creator rose from the dead to show us he is the way, the truth, and the life. The Science Foundation wrote in, there's also the fact that the modern coelacanth and the fossil coelacanth aren't even part of the same family. They're in Latimeridae and coelacanthidae respectively. Latimeria has no fossil record. Oh, yes, you're right, the coelacanth has changed in one way. Its name. Which was assigned by evolutionists who want to make them out to be as different as possible. We have more variation in dogs than we do in the fossil and living coelacanths. So the only change that has happened is in the name. We see this in multiple cases, such as the herring. The fossil form is called Nitea. The modern living version, which is identical in every respect, is called Clupea. The only evolutionary change evident is in the name. Orge 121 had a couple of very interesting comments. From an atheist and a naturalist, I will give you this, Ian. Your presentation is good. You're not a ranting idiot like Neff. Your science is questionable, which is why there is so much talk. Well, I didn't think Nephilim Free was a ranting idiot, but thank you for writing. And you know what? I don't mind someone disagreeing with me or saying I'm wrong. After all, I am only human. I can make mistakes too, and I would like to be corrected if I am in error. You'll understand I typically ignore most replies as they aren't even worth paying attention to. They are simply assertions, accusations, insults, and red herrings that have nothing to do with whether or not I'm right. So I appreciate your demeanor. Thank you. You also made a further very interesting comment worthy of a response. Another explanation for the lack of coelacanth fossils after 65 million years would be the lack of fossilization events. Fossilization is a rare event requiring a certain set of geologic actions. If the coelacanth's relatively small area did not experience an event that would encourage fossilization, then we would not find fossils. From what I can gather, coelacanths live in near coastal areas, not a common hangout for whales. Now, I agree at least in part with your fossilization statement. In fact, that was exactly my point. The absence of a fossil in the rock layer does not mean it was not present when the layer was formed. In other words, not finding a fossil fish in, say, the Cambrian does not necessarily mean that fish was not there during the Cambrian. Consequently, you cannot build an evolutionary sequence based on any supposed order of fossils appearing in the fossil record. 
As for whales not hanging out in coastal areas, well, actually the entire whaling industry is built upon coastal whale watching. When I went whale watching in Cape Breton, we were never more than a mile and a half from the coast. In fact, I don't think it was even that far. But thank you for writing in. I like the part of the paper where the authors acknowledge the long periods of stasis in the fossil record. The paper itself is drunk with the fallacy of reification, but interesting, especially when they admit, page one, their method doesn't work in nature, but only suited for the lab. I love how you are holding the Evos accountable for their comments. I have the same issues with my videos. I currently have someone telling me that my logic is invalid because my posture is bad, indicating that I don't really believe what I'm saying. Uh, I got a good laugh. Keep it up, Ian. Did you seriously say the bacteria that survived after the medicine used to treat it were less evolved because of the loss of genetic variation? I am at a loss for words. Yeah, I sure did say that. Look at the gene pool. You had more variation in the bacterial gene pool before the exposure to the antibiotics, which wiped out a huge portion of the population, leaving behind bacteria, which already existed, but now with less variation in their genome. In other words, less information in their genomes. Genetic information was wiped out, lost. That is reverse evolution. The evolutionists would claim that from the yeast experiment that gravity had to be stronger than somehow? Ha ha, this is similar to a video where I saw an evolutionist had a set of bones that were supposedly from the same animal, but they didn't fit. So you know what he did? He grinded the bones so they would fit. I laughed my butt off when I saw that, but that's the lengths they will go to to prove something. Yep, that would be the famous Lucy skeleton. If the evidence doesn't fit, eh, make it fit. <laughs> I covered this in Complete Creation, Part 16. Disabling the ratings is a good idea because it forces the Evos to come up with some kind of rebuttal which is open to ridicule. I'm not seeing any convincing arguments coming from them on your video or any other creationist videos. They always revert to comments like, over a long period of time, which is my personal favorite. This is their way of saying you can fill in the blanks because we have no idea, and hopefully you have a better imagination than we do. L.A. Wilson says Joe Taylor is a drunk? Ha 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 ha! Drunk on what? Buttermilk? <laughs> I think L.A. Wilson is high on something to make such an absurd slander. <laughs> Indeed, if you haven't figured it out already, Tino is one of those people who knows Joe Taylor personally. And yes, even though I have shown numerous lines of scientific evidence that supports the Paluxy tracks, L.A. Wilson still chooses to assert, with no evidence whatsoever, that they are all fakes. Yeah, somebody carved human footprints underneath 18 inches of undisturbed limestone. Uh-huh. I'm one of the guys who has helped break up that rock to expose these tracks in front of multiple eyewitnesses on more than one occasion. It's hard work. In fact, public excavations are held every year in the Paluxy River Red by the Creation Evidence Museum. It's been going on for years. There has literally been hundreds of eyewitnesses who will attest to the human footprints uncovered there. Sword of the Spirit immediately recognized the issue of human and dinosaur footprints found together and its relation to the age of the Earth. Now, while he's an old Earth creationist, his comments and analysis has been very interesting and he's been documenting his intellectual journey on his blog. Now, he certainly has not let me get away with anything and has been a faithful skeptic. I look forward to following his journey. Well, that's enough for this week. Thanks to everyone who wrote in agreeing or disagreeing, and thanks for watching. Remember how easy it is to share this program with your friends by clicking the convenient share button down below. I'm your host, Ian Juby, signing off for now, reminding you that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. We'll see you next Thursday. Production software was provided for Genesis Week by the Big Valley Creation Science Museum. Located just 25 minutes north of Drumheller, Alberta, in the heart of Dinosaur Badlands, the Big Valley Creation Science Museum was built from the ground up to give credit to our creator, portraying the scientific evidence showing that creation is the faith that fits the facts, and evolution is the faith that the facts have failed. Visit bvcsm.com for more details. Mm -hmm.